Hi, everybody. Welcome to a cast chat. Hey! For and Woo! Yes. Period. Woo! Uh, I'll start by saying we are usually a, a tabletop campaign, a live stream tabletop campaign. We, we used to do Kids on Bikes. And then for a period of time, we did do uh, Dungeon World up until like literally this week. And we're here to talk about why we won't be doing that any longer and what we are going to do moving forward. So uh, be prepared for that. I'm, I guess I'll just like give an out, outright like kind of content warning uh, up at the top here. I'm going to be talking about some pretty heavy stuff and uh, specifically about, you know, abuse, uh, harassment, and uh, some, most of it within like a sexual context. But I, I won't be breaking Twitch terms of service or anything, and I won't get into too many details. So uh, it, it won't be like so heavy but it, those are topics that will be brought up right now um but yeah if you want to check out us doing uh, actual playing of tabletop games you can find our, our stuff on the q10's main youtube channel and a playlist called hijinks and handlebars and the other playlists which we shall rename <laughs> uh, it's currently hijinks in dungeon world uh, but we can probably call it hijinks in the end I, I think that Jonas suggested that last end, week yeah. or, or in private, and I think that's a really good idea. So that's what we'll be doing. Uh, aside from that, check out the other Key Time shows. Uh, get Follow Jake. I don't know if Jake hit the 800 follower mark that he tweeted yeah. about today, but he deserves, you know he deserves I'll, I'll your follow. He, he does a lot of work on the back end that I think goes unappreciated. And uh, honestly, like if you're not following Jake, but you're watching our show, what are you doing? <laughs> what are He's you doing? 783 followers. And by my count, we have 14 people watching, which means if everyone watching doesn't follow Jake and does now, uh, he'll be much closer. He'll be like just a, just yeah, a few away. Almost also, there. Thanks so, for starter. At, uh, yeah. Gifted a sub. <laughs> oh, thank you. Firestarter. Oh, 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 oh someone's a caring, a caring lizard. lizard. Hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, follow at Indigo QT. Indigo QT. It means that somebody paid for somebody else's subscription to yeah. Q Times. Aww. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Laura. Uh, good to see Laura here. Ray is here. Firestarter was here enough to do that. Uh, Mr. Owlbear. Uh, and yeah, Caring Lizard, of course. Hi, Joe. Everyone. Good to see all of you. Uh, I'm going to just get into the introductions then. Uh, I'm I'm William, usually the GM for Hijinx and Handlebars and all of the other iterations of Hijinx that we do. Uh, do I say my pronouns they them? Um, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, today uh, today we're just chatting. Uh, so I don't know what the order is, but you can go next. Okay, I'm Franny. She, her. Um, I'm normally playing Brunner during this segment. Who is they them? Uh, let's go to Jonas. All right, hello. My name is Jonas, they, them, and I usually play the salamander immolator Bowser, he, him, a uh, little, little lizard boy. Popcorn me. Hi, yes. uh, I'm Spencer <laughs> LaBelle, they, them. Um, I normally play the character Denail, uh, who is a he, him. He's a little fifi boy. Um, but not tonight, baby. <laughs> Uh, and I'm Chris. Uh, I usually play Dindin, the uh, Pelican Daddy fighter, um, but he's going to be a Pelican Daddy something else, probably. In the <laughs> yeah. Pelican uh, Daddy wizard. Yeah. Uh, Ray, Ray in the chat said my daughter is laughing at me because I was like, they said my name. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's very cute. That's cute, and your daughter is cute, probably. I mean, like, I don't way, know. I don't want to. I don't want to make a judgment call, but I'm assuming your daughter's cute. I'm assuming. Uh, I'm Glass Beach Band, by the way. If you see Glass Beach Band in the chat, that'll be me. Don't get it twisted. Uh, I'm glad Spencer has given up the the thieving ways for the night. <laughs> yeah, for for now, for now. Okay. Well, let's just get into it, I suppose. So, if you have uh, followed the show for a while, or very very early on, like episode two or three or something of Hijinks and Dungeon World. Uh, there was a previous thing that had happened with I'm I, time to say the names. Okay. With Adam Coble. And uh, that situation was like very much player um, uh, abuse and like mishandling of a very, very serious situation in a way that like, 
could almost like at the time could almost be deemed as uh, malicious in, in a sense. It was, and again, content warning, but it it was Adam taking a player through a a role played essentially like sexual assault of their character, and uh, at the time. Uh, we had spoken about it and it seemed, I mean, there was like a lot like where it was unsure of intent. Uh, we all knew it was bad. It was something that we had discussed. And I mean, the community was basically like, that's bad. The sh like shows were taken away. Adam left the, the like site of like the community kind of, I mean, forcefully like people re removed him from shows and everything like that. And we all sort of moved forward. I know a lot of people, are just like dump them and continue. I'm a little bit less that way. I I do believe in like a path back for people. And at the time, and the reason I'm saying this is at the time, um, that situation is very bad and is definitely something that you need to uh, be held accountable for, and you need to hold you need to hold yourself accountable for, and you do need to make amends somehow. Uh, whether or not that means like that the victim of of what you did would be comfortable with you re-entering the community, that's completely up to them. And I think that that is like a possibility through the right course of action and the the right like sort of not necessarily like justice because I I don't. The, like the the idea of restorative justice seems seems very like weighty to like a situation like that, but uh, I definitely at the time saw a way that there could be a path back for Adam, uh, and from the way that I had like seen him GM and the things that he said and the way that he presented himself at least on social media and, and everything, it seemed like he was at least aware of how the impact of his actions. Uh, was like kind of progressive minded was like in in that realm of someone who I believed could be one of the people to actually like seek their own accountability and do the work to like make amends with the people involved and and if there was a possibility to make it back into the community in a an influencer or a performer point of view that that could be a possibility that was how I felt. Since then, Adam has done a few more things and uh, more has come out. So uh, one was there was uh, basically like a co-opting of the Black Lives Matter movement by Adam where uh, he had made a statement about like likening. I, I, I don't want to like get too much into it because I don't really remember it was a bit ago, but he basically like framed the black lives matter movement around himself and used it as like a moment and an excuse to kind of, it was kind of like he was breaking his silence to say, Hey, this isn't about me to kind of like oh, yeah. <laughs> essentially peel attention from the fact that um, in terms of the path to restoration, redemption, whatever the like, steps and work required to uh make things better um were not being taken and so it was kind of so it's it was kind of it felt very performative it felt like seizing an opportunity that here is this uh one of the the biggest uh civil rights movement in history and i'm going to take this chance to uh virtue signal my virtues as i support it with you know a big old black square um and kind of use it to try and sweep away my own wrongdoings without truly addressing them yeah so at the time of that i was like that had already been like oh my gosh how many more strikes can this dude get before i feel i mean like i we were already talking about whether or not we wanted to continue with dungeon world as the game that we were playing it did seem like a little bit too much of a sort of endorsement in the sense of like the the way that we feel about Adam Coble, because I would hate I would hate for anybody to buy the book <laughs> because they saw us playing the game. Uh, that that was my feelings at the time, but we were like rooted in the in the game. And I do I mean I'm just, objectively I will say I just I do like Dungeon World, but I won't be playing it any longer, um, especially not on stream. And I don't think I it's one of the times where it's just not going to be comfortable for me to even play it in private because. And this is the reason why we are absolutely no longer playing the game. Why we do, we absolutely want to make sure people know that we have, there is no endorsement from us to play, to purchase, to do anything. <laughs> uh, 
uh, because of like us and and everything uh the stuff that has come out more recently with like adam coming back into the the picture and in the community on a certain project where they were kind of trying to hide that he was a part of it uh with that coming out now several people uh, uh an ex especially of adams have alleged like manipulative mental and emotional abuse and for me that's like uh that's a hard stop so it's a, a final straw yeah i mean like and and just to make it clear that's not like a, oh all of this stuff built up does someone is someone uh, i'll address that in a second oh uh, it's not that all of this stuff uh this stuff like built up and finally like oh we're overwhelmed like if this had been the thing that came out the first time that would have ended our playing in our relationship with the game of dungeon world just like hard hard stop like it just yeah. there's no uh there's no path forward for me f uh, from that like in playing the game um it was and i don't mean that, that like the, the again the restorative sense or anything like i i think uh, under and this is hard to say but under the right circumstances with the right people the right mediation and the right the processes uh i think that for most things people can like actually uh it's very difficult with the way that we think about justice at all and the way that our society runs but i think there is a way that someone could even do something that heinous and like through like amends and accountability like with the victims everything there is maybe not necessarily stepping back into the community and like being in an influencer position or a performer but um making their way like back to uh into like the the community in like a lesser position i i, I do think that that would have is a possibility could be but it's all based on like victims it's all based on accountability it is based on like a form of justice and like that does does not seem like the path that any of this is going to go doesn't seem like adam is very interested in like really really trying to make amends and like be accountable so because of all of that the things that have come forward the statements that were made by the ex and a couple other people about the abuse and everything uh it just it's just gonna not be okay for for us to continue playing dungeon world especially if it gets seen as like as an endorsement and let alone us being uncomfortable with it yeah i i think there can also be something said in there about like as information comes to light and like compounds it's also like I think there could be said, especially on why some things are hard stop and some things are not, you know, it's more like it, there is a very thin veil of fiction at play versus, you know, versus it, it's happened on a, I mean, there's a whole lot that is just uh real janked up about, um, uh, going through a role play scenario in a live stream in the first place. But yeah and there's a lot that that's that's founded in but there is still this very thin blanket of fiction which i think is kind of what it, uh, fundamentally enables a little bit more potential for recovery you know and it's like it's like the kind of scenario where it's like um just trying to like flip the script and be like okay cool maybe this happened because this individual just had a fundamentally different understanding of what they were doing and how what they were doing would be perceived and where those ideas are coming from are also an issue in and of themselves you know like why do you perceive this stuff in that way sort of thing you know and why this is not the humorous content you believe it is right uh. so that's kind of where there was that window of opportunity to be like Oh my God, I I'm I I totally see what went wrong now. Um, but there's just kind of this commitment and doubling down. But now as things have compounded and more comes to light, and it's like, no, 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 no. There is not this blanket of fiction protecting. Like this is happening yeah. in this person's life directly to the people in this person's life. Um, which is where that fundamental I don't know, attitude that this is acceptable storytelling content comes from. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I I think that's well put. 
And um, there were there were essences of what you just said, Spencer, like that I remember we did touch on a, a while ago. So I hope if you if you do want to see like where that was uh, <laughs> the. <laughs> <laughs> I know the messages that we that we put to each other in Google Meeting do end up on the screen. I, I believe oh, so. Well, okay, yeah. cool. I mean, that was, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was my one. No, cool. no. so we're just thanking Chris. Thanks, Chris. Put a, a content warning in the in the chat for us. So I really, mm -hmm. I do appreciate that. Just in case anybody wasn't here for the beginning. Uh, yeah, so I, I I think that's good. I I'm just I am going to mention this thing that WWE Crow said about my voice. Um, yes, I do sound like Kermit the Frog. I, <laughs> do, do they I also do. sound like Patrick Mahomes? Because I didn't know who that was, so I looked it up. I assumed it was another. Do you hear a doot doot? No. Oh, my, my computer made it. Okay, sorry. It sounded like it, maybe it was a Google sound. I, uh, Patrick Did Mahomes. Did you hear a doot doot? <laughs> it was like a doop doop. What, what could have done this? You know, I, I think I did hear it, but it's like like when somebody's phone goes off and it's just like, it's just a normal sound. So it's like, I didn't even process it. Yeah. Uh, um, I want to, I do want to read like a little bit of chat. Like uh, Karen Lizard just said something, but I don't want to read it out loud unless you're okay with it. So uh, let me know, Joe, if it's okay, if I read your position out loud. Um, I'll, I'll paraphrase some of the things and ideas. It's also this kind of idea that it wasn't like, <laughs> pure radio silence that followed you know it was kind of a string of non-apologies and so just to talk about the nature of an apology right um an apology is not words um the words i'm sorry and all that follows are a vehicle to help communicate the fact that I understand what is wrong. I understand harm has occurred and I am expressing a commitment to not do it again and possibly make it better now. Right. That is the concept of an apology. Right. So there, there are like a few key aspects to that. There is um, identifying what I did wrong, identifying <laughs> <laughs> because if I know what I did wrong, I can know how to not do it. And how do we address what has happened? The harm, accountability of the harm that we have inflicted upon one's victims, right? And that's kind of how we move forward, right? And But like the thing is, so then we, and we kind of see this pattern, right? And I think calling that out is kind of part of the important pattern is... It is as long as an individual is expressing on, uh, I feel like I'm turning my words around, but it is the absence of taking these steps and the performance of apology that is in its own kind of sinister way, um, kind of a commitment to doing more harm. Like, okay, I don't. I feel like I kind of like got lost in my own. Head. I did get. I did get a little lost. I I, I, I yeah. feel like you said some good stuff. <laughs> I feel like maybe several adjacent thoughts kind of got inflated in the conflated in the process yeah. there. But all yeah. right, well, I've gotten the. I've been given the go ahead to read Joe's thing. So Joe said, "I initially took Adam at his word, but uh, as I watched more of his content." It has given me a weird feeling and it made me feel like he was playing playing at being progressive. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. I mean, kind of like what Spencer was saying. Yes. Just being performative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and like there were there were aspects of like I, like the, the one thing I was going to say earlier is like when this most recent stuff came out, it was kind of like, OK, well, this is the this has been the at least it's not that. And if it was, I would feel more strongly. And it just turns out that it was, in fact, that. Yeah. Yep. I, I mean, when when everything came out the, originally, uh, for so long, <laughs> I I know that like I I wasn't like this. I was defending him, but I was saying like, well, I feel like I feel like he is cognizant of the things that he does. He is like progressively minded. So I'm hoping that something some accountability and something like better might be able to come out of this. Like that was conversations that I had in private, but it was like, nah, <laughs> uh, yeah. 
we, we don't have to like linger on this for too much longer. There are some other stuff I want to do with this stream, but if anybody mm -hmm. has any like last things they want to say, I think, I think I have one more thing. Uh, I was, I was thinking of it a moment ago, but I can't exactly remember. Um, I, 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 I will, um, to kind of expand on, um, just if anybody is kind of a little unfamiliar with why uh, this is kind of, why this is kind of a uh, relevant all of a sudden again. Um, so just to kind of outline the scenario, um, uh, part of the issue was um, there was this Kickstarter, right? It was like uh, the perfect RPG. It was like a zine and a lot of game designers had come together um, and Adam Coble included in that. Um, and there was kind of a lot of uh, attempts to hide that from a number of these collaborators who now were having, you know, cool name right next to on the billing who are like, um, I'm not cool with that. I withdraw. And then people being like, yeah, good. That's like, don't. Yeah. Um, to use complete sentences. Um, <laughs> but the point of this is that the person who kind of assembled that all together, Luke Crane, um, is, is also equally kind of culpable in this sort of scenario because this is, and the pattern that this kind of highlights is people in positions of platforming and enabling abusers, right? So, Luke Crane as an associate friend collaborator of an abuser, instead of demanding accountability from that person, now creates yet another opportunity for an abuser to backdoor themselves into this area where a person such as Luke Crane in their position has uh, power and influence over in terms of shaping and curating a space, right? And I think curation is a very important social tool, right? You need to curate your spaces because if a space is not curated, that is where a lot of hostility, toxic ideas um, are allowed to ferment and foster right and so part of this scenario too is that luke crane is like a vp of community with kickstarter and even has the ability to like put the kickstarter seal of approval back to the front page on his own projects such as contributions featuring adam coble you know so it's kind of really damaging to kickstarter's credibility right that this is like a person with a with a, a non negligible amount of Kickstarter who is using that influence to enable and platform abusers and to only address Adam Coble without the people who enable people like Adam Coble is itself it's part of the whole system of enablement and how do we make that not happen and so I think in the same way. Um, by stepping away from Dungeon World is part of the process of deplatforming abusers, you know? Um, and something we had talked about previously, like um, when it was fresher and seemed like there was still a flicker of reconstruction redemption there, um, you know, something we talked about how, because like um, the co author of Dungeon World, Sage Latora, all the publishers, right? That if this is not a monolith of an abuser's work, right? There are other people involved. So it's kind of the raise of the question of do, isn't there a sort of a form of enablement by allowing that person to like overrule their work? Um, you know, which was something that like is to be considered, but yeah, sorry. I no, I love that because that, that was the thing that I was going to talk about that I forgot about. So I'm, I'm glad you ended there because uh, in private, like Ray and myself and, and a couple other of the $2 Creature Future people um, had been talking about this. Ray has been trying to help us uh, find a, a system to switch away from Dungeon World. And so in that conversation, one of them, Irons, Irons Sworn I, or something had I, I, come yeah, up. Yeah, Iron, that sounds right. Um, that had come up and like uh, yeah, Iron Adam... Sworn. Iron Sworn and Adam Coble like play tested that and uh, and there's Ray probably knows a couple more things than I do but uh, there was there was one yeah 
there are a lot of developers like game developers and like uh, a lot of the people who were on in that kickstarter for example that didn't know adam coble was a part of it or uh didn't know about like adam's abusive nature when they were working with him and all sorts of stuff like that and there is definitely uh, a way of handling this situation and <laughs> Uh, in a way that is not like going anything Adam has ever touched, we we abandon because that also <laughs> such, shuts the door on yeah. all of these other creators that are likely, and a lot of them have just flat out stated, have been very hurt and, by Adam's actions. And uh, and had they known, or if like if they had any more information, they wouldn't have worked with him or they wouldn't have asked him to play test their games or um, wouldn't have asked him to like help with, you know, the rules base for a system or like expanding a world, anything like that. Like there are a ton of people who have come out and said like, be like Adam, Adam has harmed us. Like, or, or we have like are working with Adam um, and having not known the, these things has been like an issue for us. And, uh, I do like I do think like what what Joe is saying in the chat 100% support the people Adam has hurt and harmed etc like and that and I think that goes out to uh, the people who have had their <laughs> projects or stuff kind of be abandoned or or like shut down because he has had a hand in them and I mean it's the difference is if they knew or not like mm -hmm. if someone has worked with adam since for example the first like instance like with with the the live streamed uh scene that like shouldn't have happened if people have been like chomping to to work with him even after that then like that's more of a situation where i would be like okay <laughs> uh, i mean it's kind of yeah. like how Gina Carano has like now gotten like a fucking movie with Ben Shapiro <laughs> after being fired off of Star Wars. Like, uh, cancel yeah. culture, my ass. Like, no, yeah, <laughs> it's no being canceled is a career shift for for most people. It seems it's a what a, a career shift. People take it as a career shift. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Be, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've been canceled now, so now I have an edgy career. So now like, I'm edgy I, and, and I'm leaning yeah. hard conservative. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, cool. Uh, Ray says, as a struggling creator, having an influence, uh, thumbs up your work is amazing and incredible. But then when a situation like Adam Cobble comes out, it's more than a low blow. Um, it just kicks your chair yeah. out from under you. Uh, what's what's wrong? <laughs> hey, hey, hey we're Austin. Talking about, uh, <laughs> we're talking about... Uh, abuse and uh mental and emotional manipulation and stuff and uh yeah. and the reason why we are no longer going to be using the system that we we use to play our our game uh that's what's yeah. popping but yeah it, it, it's also kind <laughs> of like circling back to the influence of the influential right so people like luke crane who are using their position and influence to uh, it, it's like there's a I, how it, like it, if I were a small creator and a tabletop developer who is like currently trying to get my own Kickstarter off the ground. And now there's this motherfucker who like um, is with Kickstarter, uses position with Kickstarter to assist his own kickstarts. It's that would i would be i put myself in that perspective and it, it's it's boiling uh, well yeah it, i mean not only that but like to, to see someone do that while platforming someone like adam Cobal, uh like trying to trying to weasel him back into the 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 limelight basically yeah any any last things i think i think we could generally just keep talking about like this and abuse <laughs> in general yeah. and like the the abuse of power at, at hand but i mean my final statement would just be like we're not playing dungeon world anymore uh support the people who have been hurt by adam uh take them seriously because i mean it's clear that like a lot of people a lot of like fans of adams don't want to uh and they probably they likely won't it's it would be hard to reach them at this point given the way that like we do like as a society we see when someone does something bad or wrong uh, so just do what you can to 
support people and especially like the ones directly harmed by Adam and the ones who may be, for example, on that Kickstarter list of developers and creators who didn't know that they were going to be paired side by side with Adam Cole, that kind of thing. So, um, William, also, I think this is something you talked about earlier today, but, um, I, I, I think you said there's like, it, it felt like there's a difference between playing the game and performing the game. And like, I, I know there's like somebody mm. who stated that like they bought the game because of, um, uh, hijinks, but like, I, and I, like, that's your game now. I don't know if you feel differently, but like, if you want to create your own story, I don't think you necessarily have to like burn the book, but I don't think you should no, yeah. be perf like promoting it either. And I think that's what we were talking about, right? I, yeah. I think there, um, and I think this could also possibly be a segue towards talking about um, other tabletop systems. Yeah. Um, but um, as, because like, uh, cause ultimately dungeon world is a, is, it is a hack of powered by the apocalypse, right? It, the whole 2d six system, um, which has so many other different unique iterations, like mm -hmm. is go that's, that's far beyond AK, you know, like that's, um, in another circle entirely. Right. So, and it's like, it, like, the idea of okay cool well i still want to do use the apocalypse world system but set to fantasy um it's still Wait, hold on. i do want to address this so 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah someone said also remember adam is a person and trying to become a professional and earn a living again and canceling people is also wrong okay uh, i will I, i'll address that um I, I agree. Like there, there are aspects of like dogpiling and, and like quote unquote like cancel culture that I think like I think the issue is that people don't want to hold themselves accountable because there has never been a path back. It's just like it's just something you don't see, and uh, and so like for the beginning with Adam Coble where it was like a professional problem like the the with the assault scene like played out on stream with those players. That's horrible. And that's horrible for those players. And like genuinely, like I, I mean, borderline actual sexual harassment, at least like it, it could teeter into that just because of like the overwhelming nature of that sort of a situation, especially putting someone through that live on a stream. And you have to take into account like someone's previous trauma. If that was like something that were to come into play here, it is like a gross misunderstanding, misuse of power and like storytelling uh, that like that situation, like I say, I said it before and I said it again. I think there were avenues that could have been taken that maybe like through amends and like accountability of Adam and like with the victims uh, that could have stabilized, like given the amount of time or the things that like Adam would need to do to bring him back into the community and even into a performer position i think that that was like a there was a window as far as like actual like mental emotional manipulation and abuse of partners of like other like people in general i think that is much harder to come back from and like not only do i like i don't excuse any of it but um i i do like i i think that's so so hard and someone coming back i don't think they deserve to be back into a performance like influencer position from there i think that like from a bad thing like an actual like you have a partner and you are mentally and emotionally abusing them that comes out i think there is a step down that just has to happen where you do not get to come back to where you were that there is just are... fundamental wait uh but as far as like trying to become a professional adam was, was not trying to become a professional adam was a professional and and misused that professional status to inflict harm on people in a way that at the time could have been a misunderstanding a gross uh, a gross misunderstanding but could have been but the things that happened in private the things that happened with people and like directly partners and everything that has nothing to do with the job that has nothing to do with the career that has everything to do with the person and the people that you hurt and as far as I'm concerned, cancel culture in in its sense is something that we 
as a society definitely need to address and analyze and rework because the dogpiling and the callouts and everything has turned almost into a game of who can we get rid of instead of like, and this is so hard because like people, like what Jonah said before, if someone is canceled, it's not, it, they don't lose. They just have a career shift. Uh, but in this case, like, or cases sort of like this, I, it is just always going to push someone to the other side if there is not a path back. And I don't mean a path back to like where they were. I just mean a path back to maybe the community that they cherished or the people that they were around. Cause you can really hurt your own community and you can really know that you've hurt them and hold yourself accountable and try to make amends with as many of the people as you hurt as possible. And if you go through all of the proper like channels and ways to do that, and you really like in your heart try, I think in that instance, you can find your way back into a community as long as like that is like there is amends in a way that the victims feel okay about. That does not give you a right to be a performer and an influencer and in a position of power ever again. And that is what we are talking about with Adam. I'm not talking about him losing his career and, and like, and I will, well, I am talking about him losing his career. If, if Adam can't be trusted to be a good person in private, even then maybe Adam should be looking at a career in something that does not directly involve him talking to people. Maybe he can be someone who sits at a desk and does like data, uh, fulfillment and like stuff like that. There are plenty of careers and plenty of jobs that Adam can do to earn a living, to make money that do not give him a position of power. And that is like what I am trying to address. I do not think you should push someone so far that they lose a livelihood. I think people are entitled to uh, a house over their heads, food in their mouth, like a, a decent like standard of living. I, in a general sense, like no matter who you are, I feel that way. But uh, the way that you see canceling, the, this person I'm talking to in the chat, and the way that I see canceling are very different, though I can like respect the idea of like there, there being a, a misuse at times of like the way that people are quote unquote like canceling people. I just want to, I just want to get that out of the way. I, I do not agree with you necessarily, a uh, chat person who's the color of your word, your letters. Is so dark right yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate like you coming in. I understand. I hope, I hope that like something I said, like, will will help you maybe like see, well, you're saying that's all you're trying to say. I agree. He shouldn't be where he was. Yes. I just don't want the mob mentality to remove hum his humanity. I, yes. Okay. So maybe we do agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah, because like if if we're if we're willing to just like look uh, the other way and and let Adam just like weasel back into the community, we're not standing up for and we're not looking out for the people that Adam has hurt. And fundamentally and ultimately, it is up to the people that Adam has hurt uh, to like decide how they feel about what happens in the future or what where Adam's career goes or anything like that. But unfortunately, the way that like canceling and like our society handles when someone does something wrong or bad, it is uh, admittedly a difficult position for anybody to like actually find out how to hold themselves accountable and to make amends. So I, I get it. The steps are not in place. There is no like test. There is no uh, proven person to point to who has done a good job at holding themselves accountable and who has made amends with the victims and the people that they have harmed. I, I, I agree with that. And part of that is a societal thing that we like just aren't ready to handle. But, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, a big part of the reason why we don't allow that kind of thing is because too often when people are given the levity and are given a little bit of wiggle room to make their return or to do something in that nature, they always like historically have abused it and have not held themselves accountable and have not learned from what they did. That's all That's all I'm gonna say. And if anybody else has one final thing they wanna do, I do want to move on to actually talking about what to do with the next, like moving on to the next system. Uh, yeah, um, I'll, I'll throw out a few uh, thoughts real quick. Um, well, just on the 
nature of abuse and of positions of influence, right? It's like, um, there are so many talented artists and creators and performers in every field, every discipline that to have a position taken by a, a person who has done harm and is completely unapologetic for it. It's, 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 it's wrong and messed up. Um, and there is something to be said about the, fundamental nature of abuse in that very frequently um, abuse is largely about power dynamics, right? So if you're in a power dynamic where one person is a cemented professional and one person is an up and coming rising professional, this is where you see a lot of power dynamics created where because as um, a more established professional, I can really help actualize your career or inhibit its growth right and it's like fucking get out you know let somebody else in that spot right like so when we're talking about community and socializing it's like it's like okay cool you can be here and do your thing but i don't think you should be getting gigs i don't think you should be like getting jobs like go find a day job like a, a, an average human being you know um and and there there are People who don't have, um, and I, I think this is the big picture, is that the, the the inciting incident of this incident on the the stream Far Verona, if anybody wants to look it up, um, stems from Adam having this worldview and this belief of these actions are okay for me to do, right? And that lens of the world applies to every part of his life, right? As our own respective lenses for us in every aspect of it, right? Okay, and I will put a conclusion there because it's always <laughs> from one thing to another. Hell yeah. yeah. And I, I, yeah, PDT, uh, we're good. We're yeah, good, yeah, you, yeah. It's, it... Yeah, you didn't, yeah, I, I think I read it more oppositionally than you meant. Um, mm -hmm. but still, I think it opened up a good point and yeah. that I, that I did. It's good that we addressed it. And like, I, I appreciate the, the comment. Um, yeah. cool. You want to talk about quests? I, want to talk yeah. about quests? Wait, I, do. Uh, I, I have a closing think. statement. Um, I yeah. think yeah. it is so important and like often people have this sort of uh, apologetic sense about talking about difficult issues when in actively engaging in conversations about difficult issues is how we curate safer spaces where people who do harm are not involved and people don't get harmed in spaces that they want to be in, you know? And I think a willingness to be engaged and extend conversations and approach it on a deeper level um, is an active part of that process. And I think it is very important and it is how we get to a more ethical point of uh, done. <laughs> Hell yeah! Yes. Thank you. So well much. said. Well said. So, shall we talk about Quest? I learned something about Quest. You learned something about Quest? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say because I was looking at it again before the stream. Um, because I, I I like what I've seen of it. Um, but I was looking at the like personnel, people who worked on it for familiar names, and I just like right in the middle of here is editor Chris Plant, and I'm like, surely not the Chris Plant I'm thinking of. It is the Chris Plant who is the editor in chief for Polygon. Um, who is one of my favorite like video game journalists. He's he's a great, wonderful man, as far as I've been able to tell. He was the editor for this game, um, which wow, is amazing. just another reason I'm interested in playing it. Oh, um, uh, well, then I should start. Yeah. I don't want to do Quest. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's fine. I'll play it. I'll you know, <laughs> and, and, uh, run it for my birthday before the stream next Thursday. We'll make that happen, maybe. We'll talk about it. <laughs> um, no, what, no uh, uh, you don't, you don't want to play Quest. Well, okay, I'm open to Quest, but the um the mechanics like of the upgrades and everything seem a little bit lacking for me like it's it's not it seems like a super fun game just from us uh running dungeon world to running quest i do not 
feel good about it because the okay. reason the reason I have liked Dungeon World, don't buy Dungeon World, don't get the game. <laughs> the reason I have liked it, duh, this isn't an endorsement. The reason I liked Dungeon World uh, is because of the open endedness of the narration of whatever could happen. So, for example, like you roll, uh, if you want to beat someone up, you roll a hack and slash, or like uh, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use Monster of the Week to talk about this. Is that okay with everyone? Do we understand? Yeah. It's basically the same. So Monster of the Week, you you roll to kick some ass, and you basically <laughs> like narrate what happens. Uh, in Quest, it seems like I was just looking at like the upgrades and the things that you can take to like as a fighter, and like one of the things is you can take like counter attack, and to me, I I don't want you to have to take. Like, like, and the, the reading of it is like, if you use this ability, when, if someone gets like, tries to get an attack off on you and you, and they miss or like you block it, you can then like strike in return. That is like too step by step for me in a way that I think is very fun and cool. It seems like a looser, like dungeons and dragons or a uh, pathfinder kind of thing. Like I really yeah. like quests mechanics i like the way they handle success and failure i like how they channel like distance with attacks i like i mean i like the way that they present the information and i i do like the abilities i like the classes i like the way it works i do not see it as a good one-to-one -one for dungeon world uh i i think my preference okay. moving forward is honestly going to have to be something powered by the apocalypse because it is that open-endedness -ended of their narration from myself and from all of you as players that I really, really loved. Like, like I, I think back to um, how boring combat is generally for like, uh, for like a, a Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder. You have to be like pretty good and like pretty on it with like as a GM and your players to make combat not feel like it lasts forever. And then I think back to uh, in the end where we had the fight scene in the that like dinner hall. Yeah, in the castle and the castle of way where like everything just felt like it was like bullet time and like things were going so fast and like people were using the environment like oh, I'm going to chop the chandelier down. Oh, I'm going to lift up the table and press a, a bunch of these guys against the wall. I'm going to like it just like felt visceral and very alive and like exciting and people were like using their minds to like come up with ideas that, that that aren't necessarily in the rules or in the guidelines of like the move that you're using but you like see the environment you see the creativity and what you could do and you like open-ended things like the apocalypse systems where all you have to do is roll and succeed or roll and get a mixed success and then we all go okay cool this is what happened then like that is what I like most about the way that this campaign has been going. So I, I think I just like, feel like you, someone has to either show me something that is similar in a different style, or it has mm -hmm. to be powered by the apocalypse game. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we can find a power by the apocalypse game that we can. Here, here's the thing. Do I don't know, Ray, can you design something in a week? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, like, there's literally a, a game called, I think it's called tower world or world of towers. Uh, but it is it is a like simplified hack of dungeon world about a world with magic towers. Um, I don't know if we like if that is even distant enough. If it is uh, like a game adapted from literally dungeon world, but I can try to find it. <laughs> a game of magic towers. Yeah, yeah, that's it, it our is. world. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what drew me to it. Um, uh, no, to find this, we got um, an offer. I'll I'll make a quick um, observation in terms of design um, and a major distinction between Dungeon World system and Quest or D and D or Pathfinder system, where in the latter system um, the enemies have a turn. In Dungeon World, it is entirely player centric. Um, yeah. Enemies and NPCs and other characters who are not the players um they have their own agency narrative but in terms of actions to make things happen and determine consequences um it, it, like it, enemies really only like take their turn um when a player like messes up their role or there is like an opportunity narratively to like progress the tension of a situation you know where um 
because like and looking at quests what i i kind of appealed and what made it seem at first glance that to be similar and adjacent to dungeon world is that it kind of uses the same the same way that um dungeon world they're the powered by the apocalypse system has this um 2d6 trinary outcome of you know fail mix success success um it kind of does that but extrapolates it on a d20s one through 20 system um and it's essentially um that same sort of uh trinary of you know fail mix success success but plus uh nat 20 and nat one as a yeah more extreme i did example. i did like that a lot yeah, I like the idea of having like a critical success and a critical failure still. I'm 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 quite fond of those. Personally, I know it's a hotty topic in the in the tabletop community, but I am a favor in favor of them. Uh mm -hmm. Austin says hashtag let enemies play. <laughs> <laughs> Give them a turn. Uh yeah, you know what? Why don't we just play Pathfinder? You know? <laughs> um God, I'm trying to find this uh tower RPG. Um uh, I, uh, I while you're looking at that, I want to say Ray. Uh, Ray says like I was gonna offer to build you something simple based on what I put out this week. I I have um, I I won't say much, but I've like I've basically forced Ray into a position of having to design a different game already. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> uh, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's very funny that like I'm just sitting here like I don't know, right? You got another one for me? <laughs> no, no. Hey, we Austin, appreciate you're, your very, you're very useful. You're, it's you're, we really like having you. Yeah, it's le it's uh, some levity. <laughs> is that what you're am I? What's the gift. word I'm trying to think? Of? What do you What do you think? <laughs> levity is appropriate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. So I guess if anybody, can... if anybody in the chat has like. I know Ray. I know you're in the chat, right? Whoa! I didn't even know Jared was here. I just, I just caught. Hey, that. Jared. Wait, where? What? From a while back, saying well. Oh, said well said, Spencer. Spencer. Thank you. Jared. Yeah, I've already forgotten what I said. I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't but find. But um, as far as um, powered by the apocalypse systems, or I mean, that's a good place to start. If anybody knows, we there, we just like kind of hacking monster of the week a little bit to work. Um. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, like, I'm not even sure we really need to hack it. Just kind of. Well, you know? the investigate a mystery and read a bad situation stuff is yeah, so I specific. Uh, everything else we could maybe work with. Maybe we could just. Mm, <laughs> maybe that could just be like perception um, uh, and investigation. <laughs> here, like, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna share something in our. It's a cult mystery. <laughs> it is kind uh, of a cult mystery. We could switch over to Monster of the Week yeah. pretty easily, I guess. But are we just there's overthinking also, okay. this? There is a um. There is. I I I found there is a like. Uh, I don't know if it's an, an expansion or what you would want to call it, but a it it is Apocalypse World Fallen Empires. Any guesses as to what that might be? It is a fantasy like reset for Apocalypse World. So it has a bunch of. I'm just looking at the playbooks right now. Um, I want to send them in our group chat. But um, this would be the thing about Apocalypse World is that it does become, by its nature at least, grittier. Um, we can use that if we want to. We don't need to, but we are in an apocalyptic situation. Um, and I don't see anything on these sheets about like the sex that is part of Apocalypse World. Um, that it. Is there half shaking? Uh, no, that it's there. Um, I, oh, it's I immediately found a playbook. The, it's oh, just okay. the uh, <laughs> playbook special. Um, having run Dungeon World, uh, Apocalypse World, and knowing where it's at. Um, oh yes, it's right here. The sexer. <laughs> playbook special. I mean, yeah, and that is of course something that we could just like not have be part of the game because I don't think any of us are interested in that for this show. Um, but yeah, I also, I mean, I love Monster of the Week. I already made Dowser in Monster of the Week. Um, so I would not at all be opposed to doing that. Um, I don't honestly, know. It, it, uh, Monster of the Week for like the way that Franny has been playing Dun Dungeon World anyway might work really well. Cause like they're, they're instead of, I mean, cause there are so many times where you're like, I want to use my magic to do this thing. And then I go, well, your magic can't do that thing. But in, and monster of the week you it's literally or just a use magic take. Roll. yeah and basically whatever you can think of within the bounds of like the game you yeah. can do. 
It's just like if right. you will, you, well, you can just like just, just regular. You can you can do most things. Big things will require work to make them set up. Like there, th big things that aren't like already enumerated. Um, yeah, because there are yeah. Uh, and we'd have to like rethink the way that we do like healing and harming. Ugh, gosh, <laughs> I'm. I, yeah. I just want to let you know that Din Din is s so doable, and literally, you could do Din Din in yeah. um, uh, kids on bikes, and it'll probably work out. Because Din Din, <laughs> he attack, but he also protect. <laughs> he attack and, you protect. <laughs> and and he cook. <laughs> I, I, do not, I, I don't want to do kids on bikes for the rest of mm. this i agree just mm -hmm. i think like because the special abilities are the thing that i like most about like this campaign that we're doing like that mm -hmm. you can customize your characters so well and i don't like that's that's why quest is cool because you have customization possibilities but like they're so they're customizable in the sense of things that i feel like don't need to be addressed like having a counterattack, like having like a i mean it's like having um uh an opportunity attack in dungeons and dragons like uh, unless you take or, or not dungeons and dragons and pathfinder unless you take having unless you take the feat opportunity attack you're not one of the people who's like quick enough to strike someone when they're like when their guard is down or something i the, i just don't want that to be I love that. I love playing Pathfinder mm -hmm. Second Edition, especially on Sundays at 1.30 p.m. Pacific. Uh, <laughs> 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 Don't get me wrong. Uh, I really do love it, uh, and I love getting like really number heavy and like in the gritty, uh, like nitty gritty there. But the reason I like this campaign is because it is kind of the opposite. Where like I have generally, I mean, if you go back and you look at half the stuff that Franny and Sam have done. Uh, I don't. I don't know. A lot of GMs would have that would have like been like not only super like um, excited about that, or, or would have even like let it happen. Like I just think someone said it earlier in the in the dining room fight scene when Sam turned into sand, exploded <laughs> into people's mouths, and then and then turned into glass and like reformed. Well, he back. turned into glass because I melted him, which is a, yeah, yeah. another layer of that. That it's like you're really letting us play here. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that kind of stuff is what's what I found exciting well, about. Well, that's what, what we makes doing. great narrative. Yeah, like mm -hmm. yeah. you know, it was Let's fun. Let's be real. Yeah. Uh, oh, look, a dragon. We have to burn down five towers and steal magic daggers, kids. The dark. That's dark, but it's so inventive. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Dad, that's talking about Daddy Dad, 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 um taking his kids to the woods for play adventures and like kids on bikes and stuff. Uh, okay, it, people are talking about the throne. I'm also terrified of Denale, who's actually a demigod. <laughs> Dethr <laughs> Apparently, Dethrone is a is a good play playbook or system or something. Uh, all right, all right. So, monster of the week is a possibility. I, I agree with that. Uh, unfortunately, like Apocalypse World and stuff like that is a little too rooted in um, sex. So, I I, yeah. I kind of want to leave that. I, I'm all for yeah. running a very sexy, sexy campaign someday. Don't get me wrong. This is. <laughs> <laughs> Monster Hearts Part Two. Yeah, just watch Heart Monster. Yeah, they're not approved or nothing. Um, um, yeah, no, William. William loves sex, but not for this game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, I could use a uh, uh, more cooking mechanics in whatever. More cooking mechanics. Next. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to look Wait. into that. Cooking. T -T cooking Mama T T R P G. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> our 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 host here, Q Times. Oh, I didn't do the thank you at the beginning. Thanks, Q Times. Uh, <laughs> uh, is saying that's the that. reason why Powered by the Apocalypse is rough. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's what Ray is saying. Hold up, it, all caps. Why? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Austin is saying so much for my sex mancer sheet. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Dethrone the divine. I think I know somebody needs to just. Ray. But oh was... wait, actually, it just occurs to me. <laughs> there is a power starting the uh, uh, thirsty sword lesbians is oh, yeah. a powered by the apocalypse hack I've seen floating around. And if the title "thirsty sword lesbians" does not like immediately tickle your heartstrings, um, leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not welcome here. <laughs> um, sorry, that just I mean, uh, struck me. Well, very can Dossie be the god? <laughs> I'm looking at Deep Throne the Divine. If we just make, I guess we, we 
we've already created a god within a group of Zipsana, but mm-hmm. it, it looks like it's uh, this is a game of rays, but uh, you you make a god, you, you create a god as a group, maybe. I'm I'm just looking at a little description here. Rewrite the rules of the world, remake things in your own image, build a following, and dethrone the divine. I uh, I could see that working. Uh, as written there for what we're looking to do at the end here. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. But... Uh, uh, what Ray was, yeah, Ray is talking about like the, what he hacked, like or to, to make it by um, DPS by awesome DPS by chaos grenade. It's a system. Mm. Um, so what? Mm. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Bless you. Ray earlier, Bless. you were saying that, <laughs> were you saying everybody can be a God? Says Laura. Were you saying, okay. uh, or your version is one that we should look into, or that the one that you it, based your on is the one we should it, look into. Sorry, because that's um, we can. I mean, we can definitely look at it for sure. I'm always up for. I was gonna ask earlier: Is it ever allowed, or would it be way too complicated and not be interesting? Um, but to do hybrids, like take one game that we really like some of the aspects of and then Just another game to... kind of... yeah i'm not i'm not opposed to that really at all um i've but, thought about right. doing that for like home D games um just because like uh because like what i like out of D is like the number crunchy theory crafting battle mind and how by using those mechanics to then inspire a character who would have that such mechanics for me but i really like the narrative heavy 2d6 system so i've thought about like well how because like sometimes like games like D feel like chunks of different systems punt like just like shoved together so i'm like there's absolutely no reason you can't like cut and paste like your favorite systems um aside from you decentralize um whatever your uh numerical fundament is yeah the thing that i keep coming back to that's going to be hard is like i just want to give you all hard like i i love the openness of the narrative but i want like hard set rules for what you can and can't do like specialization wise and that's like that because like that gives you a way to be creative. Like uh, the narrative doesn't have to have a sound. A, it doesn't have to be like constrained by walls. But I want your characters to be kind of constrained by walls so that you can so that you can think more creatively with what you have at hand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like I, I love that. the some of my favorite moments are when you figure out a way to use a move of yours or like I mean like the first time. Um, Franny used Brenner to attack, like got a success on the attack. So added the D6. So it was a D10 and a D6, had used Exterminatus and had Holy Smite. So it was like a D10, a D6, two D4, and a D, a, another D8 or something like that. And I was just like, mm-hmm. oh my God. <laughs> and, and then like 24 damage to like one person and just like, just rip them to shreds but like that kind of like really (laughs) specializing and really like honing in and figuring out how like i mean every time chris uses ben bars lift gates to like almost in any situation i'm like this is awesome like this rules and it like and it generally most of the time feels like the inappropriate time to use it and sometimes we get a little like uh free with how we both feel about it but i like it (laughs) Ben bars and lift gates is like it feels like like grand theft auto where it's like every <laughs> game is an open world game why I just open like, the world but it's like what is it like uh uh there are lots of games with like destructible environments and there are even more games without destructible environments you know so there's like this convention that the world is created is provided and you're given a finite ways as a player in any game given uh, there's a finite number of ways to interact with the environment and a move like Ben bars and lift gates is like, Nope, there's a door here. Now, sir, that is a wall going into 600 feet of rock for now. Sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> sir, this is a Wendy's. Yeah. Uh, with all that said, by no way should you purchase 
uh, Dungeon World. Uh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> this is not an endorsement. Um, don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's worthwhile. Uh, awesome DPS looks cool. Cool. That, that's something that we can look into then for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I, yeah, I have purchased it. Uh, I, still, I still do think I want to stick more to a Powered by the Apocalypse system somehow. Sure. I think it's worthwhile looking into that tower one that you were talking about, Jonas. God, I know if I can find it. it it's okay. So I will say it's not the, the description of it as being like a fantasy setting about a world of magic towers. That much is true. It's not the one I was thinking of that is based on Dungeon World, I don't think. So that's actually good. Um, I just oh, remember how I, I found I, it. So I think being based on Dungeon World. Because like what we were saying before, there are people ah. who are inadvertently going to be hurt by like the Adam Koble's actions, like whether career-wise or business-wise. These people, I mean, like we can look into it, but these people likely didn't know of Adam's abusive nature when they basically like hacked Dungeon World to make their game. And I wouldn't want to have like what Adam did smear them as well. Like, so I'm also, I'm actually like kind of in favor of like supporting something that might be based on Dungeon World if it's by people who, yeah. Um, did it create the game between when the information came out <laughs> about Adam and now? Well, the game that I was confusing it with is called World of Dungeons, if you want to look into that. <laughs> it is a three-page... It is, it, is it is a simplified dungeon world uh, called World of Dungeons. <laughs> um, world of Dungeons. Yeah, I... I you're welcome. You're watching another episode of Hijinx in World of Dungeons. <laughs> <laughs> Hijinx in World of Dungeons. Yeah. Uh, Hijinx in Wad. God, where? Wad. World of Dungeons. Yeah. Um, I, I did have a tweet earlier. Um, and somebody rec recommended me a game called Fantasy Age, um, which I haven't um, seen or thing, but I see it. Pow the game system powers the Dragon Age RPG, um, uh, and I don't, I don't know. So um, that could be. I, no, I yeah, don't know anything my, about it. My only stipulations. Really skirted past the copyright, huh? Yeah, World of Dungeons. My only stipulations as a GM is like, even if the system is kind of easy, like, uh, it's just it. At, when if I'm very very first being introduced to a system and then I have to run it, I do so much better if like I if I'm a player first and somebody else runs it for me first. Uh, mm -hmm. So in this situation, it's going to be like I we're gonna pick up a system and I'm just gonna have to do it. So the least amount of like difference or the least learning mechanics I need to learn the better. That's why like I mean even looking at Quest I was like oh gosh like oh oh Ray like also shared Iron Sworn with me and like opening that up even though it's really simple I was like I don't even know where this starts I don't I don't know anything and the PDF is huge <laughs> but it's always like the Dungeon World PDF that book is enormous. Um, but like once you know what you're looking for, you can kind of cut through all of the superfluous things that that you'll like go back to later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, world of Wildevere, maybe. That's not a real word. <laughs> um, not a fantasy word. Would you like dungeon? your very your. I can't think. Would of you? Would one. you like? Would you like dungeon? dungeon you are very <laughs> young. <laughs> Ready? Rover, Rover, <laughs> perfect. Um, our our light. We could play Fiasco. Fiasco is genre fluid. I I have played Fiasco in a fantasy setting. Um, but I think the thing with Fiasco is yeah, it's funny. It, it, well, it's I'll, like yeah, Fiasco is in terms of talking more about the gameplay. Um, is very epilogue um centric um and i i have difficulty imagining fiasco as anything more than a one shot um since a lot of the gameplay of fiasco yeah. is like you're rolling dice just like a single d6 here and a d6 there um and then it's like you you keep it or you lose it or something like that but you kind of have a, have a pool of dice going um that's just kind of the 
uh, it's a little Icarus like, you know, the rising. Okay, cool. The pool's getting bigger. This is going to get uh, big and chaotic. Um, and then ultimately it comes up to um, a massive dice roll that is like for the epilogue because a fiasco, which is kind of written like a, like a, a Coen brothers movie, you know, like it's Fargo or something. Mm -hmm. um, and that's mm -hmm. kind of like, uh, does your wacky heist, do you get away with it or nope? Uh, Mr. Pink gets shot in the gut and the cops all catch you and you don't get the diamonds um, sort of scenario. Um, sure. As opposed uh, to next time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get, I get you. I've never played Fiasco. The one time I got a chance to, I was like busy or something in college and then all my, my whole improv troupe had fun without me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and me and I wasn't on the troupe at that time if it's the time oh, you're talking yeah. about i i, I uh, believe it was yeah it was I like got, invited maybe because you couldn't be there um yeah <laughs> yeah maybe yeah not, i don't remember why i was busy i was in that moment ridiculous yeah no um, they vowed never to play fiasco well maybe we should <laughs> uh, i mean like so monster of the week is definitely a possibility we can look into that a little bit more <clears throat> um this world of Wildevir, we can look at. We can look at the um, awesome, awesome grenade thing. Familiars of Terra Part Two. No, awesome PS. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Familiar Familiars of Terra was fun, uh, and was hard to manage. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I liked the find concept. This tower game. Maybe I dreamt it. Well, we played, it, we played yeah. it since, and yeah. we had a much more successful time the second time. Yes, around. we did. Yeah. Oh. Whoops. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I think I'm kind of winding down here. I don't know much else that we can discuss at the moment. Um. Then. Uh, like final thoughts. Then. Oh. Like. Like I want to know where people at. Right, based yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's up, Jonas? Oh, oh, uh, I, I was just remembering that the other game I wanted to bring up again was Worlds, Worlds in Peril, which is, is a superhero uh, tabletop RPG. But I feel like with the way that we've all built our characters being mm -hmm. powerful, that could be a good avenue for recreating them. And I feel like it could be flexible enough to, to tell the stories. But I haven't looked into it at all. Is that Powered I by the Apocalypse? I just saw it in my search history and remembered that that was one. It is. It is. It's Powered by the Apocalypse for like comic book based <laughs> hero stories. Oh, that's yeah. That um, might be really worthwhile looking into. He's super easily like hackable. Yeah. I mean, because we're like, basically fantasy be superheroes. In in certain instances, I've like I've run a D and D campaign where it was like a Western like steampunk thing, mm -hmm. where instead of like daggers and swords and stuff. We just they were just guns. <laughs> they were just they were just like short range. I was still playing guns. a knight, but that just made the world have knights. Now. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, even if we have um, something like a superhero game or whatever, if it's easily like not even necessarily hackable, but we just call things different things, I almost feel like yeah, I almost feel like what, if we find something that. If we find something that works, we're basically going to play the um, the Romeo plus Juliet game, where the this yeah the, the yeah guns, the, the, the guns are called the, the sword brand oh, guns. Yeah, yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, they it, it's set in modern day, and so all the lions when they're saying sword, they still say sword, but that's because all of the guns are sword brand guns and say sword <laughs> on them. It's really funny. They have their little establishing close up, you know, because like the text, it is unedited Shakespeare script for a modern production. It is it is <laughs> yeah. the script by William Shakespeare, screenplay by yeah. William Shakespeare. Um, and they get like a little establishing shot of like the gun. You see the like gun brand. So <laughs> that's how Will tells him. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. Uh, okay, so. Any cool. final thoughts from anyone? And we, we can we can do a list and get some stuff like figured out on our end later. So uh, hopefully sorry, hopefully we figured out very soon because I am trying to continue next week. Uh, and that means like us figuring mm -hmm. stuff out, 
and getting Laura on the same page as well so that she can create her character because she is she was supposed to be our guest this week. And yep. with everything that happened, she very, very graciously changed times extremely last minute uh, and was able to like work around what, what we wanted to do, like taking the week off so we didn't like have to either play Dungeon World or figure something else out immediately. So thank you, Laura, uh, so much. And we want to get this stuff figured out so that you have time to build your character, so that we have time to figure out our stuff, and so I can figure out how to how I'm going to yeah. be GMing moving forward. So I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, now fi final thoughts. Okay, so um, Shakespeare the RPG, right? So how it is, is <laughs> you're all, yeah. uh, the players assume, uh, it's going to be called William Shakespeare has a gun. And so the players all play the <laughs> roles of uh, assistants, actors, performers, costumers in Megalomaniac who also has a modern day assault rifle or maybe a pistol, it doesn't matter, it's anachronistic. Um, but Shakespeare has a gun and... You know, it's about the players trying to get through their production um, without uh, Shakespeare with the gun going wrong. Spencer, I love it. Yeah. You should write it. <laughs> yeah, I was wow. thinking about, um, wow. um, what was it? Uh, uh, so and so's big vacation. Um, that, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Who you yeah play that? It, that... <laughs> you have your... <laughs> we should switch. We should switch. To Jason say this big vacation for our campaign. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, space I'm going, you think is in the sky. I'm going back to Spencer's uh, semi joke pitch, yeah, yeah, yeah. but now you have both me and Ray who think that you should actually write this playbook. <laughs> yeah. um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to say hi to whoever said hi to me earlier. They said hi, Chris. Hi, William. Hello. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's a great final thought. Uh, that's that's Spencer. Hall's Emporium, William. Ha! Huh, what? <laughs> what? Nothing. <laughs> uh, um, Spencer, you've used up all of your time. I'm sorry. If you wanted to say anything else, you can't. Uh, <laughs> we're only allowed to certain amount of words per uh, per episode. <laughs> no. Um, oh, Victor. yeah. Oh, 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 oh! It's been so long. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh my gosh. I reunion live on Twitch. Wow. Hi. <laughs> and now Austin is saying hi, William. <laughs> okay. Hi, so William. Spencer, if you have any other final thoughts about like actual um, uh, stuff that we discussed, uh, please, please go ahead. Uh, we need rewrite stat. Uh, William Shakespeare just shot the assistant copy editor. Oh no. Uh, we need fresh ink for the printer. Know, Jonas, did you have anything? That you wanted to say? Um, you know, I think we should play Quest. <laughs> uh, and I, I, Chris, I, I don't uh, feel. Like. <laughs> if I, I'll take another look at it because maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm misrepresenting no, 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 Quest. No, 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 no. I was no, I, I was just being a shit. No, 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 no. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm no, wrong. No, 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 uh, yeah, just be good to each other, and you know, we'll we'll figure this shit out. And yeah, there. Thank you. Could there be a, a tabletop like game called Chekhov's Gun, where like, where you there is something you have to like, there is something brought up at the beginning that like an innocuous thing that uh, as a group kind kind of like a multi like narrative thing where by the end of it, um it has to be like the big part of the climax, <laughs> like a one page RPG. That sounds like, like that sounds like, need to be a, like an improv this. form. I think it just, we've gone too far. Shakespeare and you know, no. that well, just, like a hack you know, of Shakespeare, Shakespeare has, a has a gun, has a really nice ring to it. <laughs> if Shakespeare has a gun, does have a gun. <laughs> like, um, wait, used to bring uh, Chekhov into this. Maybe it's <laughs> <don't need laughs> more. God, who had my copy? There was, I, I'm just now remembering, um, some webcomic author did a choose your own graphic novel of Hamlet, and you mm -hmm. could follow um, Hamlet, Ophelia, or the ghost of Hamlet Sr. Um, and <laughs> they, they had... Oh, yeah, uh, had it's by Ryan North. It's called To Be or Not To Be. Mm, yeah. Oh, that's cool. And, like, 
there was they had an asterisk um so you could like go through the plot like the canon canonical um uh <laughs> william shakespeare who didn't have a guns uh version of hamlet um but alternatively you could be like no hamlet sucks ass i'm gonna be ophelia a science genius and create all these wild inventions or being like i'm a ghost fucko i'm gonna go explore space Okay, so you can find Spencer on Twitter. <laughs> at, <laughs> I don't actually know. Um, it's it's a uh, uh, hi. I'm Spencer Labelle. You can find me on Twitter, not at Splubble. That's taken and defunct. Um, you can find me at Spence Labelle. It's my name minus an R. Um, though you can find me at Splubble. S P L U B B L E on instagram and twitch not that i'm streaming or anything um but if you find a splubble anywhere but twitter it's probably me did you did you spencer did you do your eyebrows and cut a slit in them yes it i did do my yeah. eyebrows it i just looks great slit. oh it looks great looks both great. um just this these are my natural eyebrows. The one. just the one. Oh, okay okay just the one uh and then Jonas, you already went. Did you have? Hey, we did as a joke. I did cut you off. Did you want to say any more? Uh oh yeah. Just I'm in a band with William called Glass Beach, and with the rest of our band, we're doing a stream tomorrow at four o'clock, where we are going to be working on our patron requested cover of My Chemical Romance's "Welcome to the Black Parade." We're gonna start the tracking for that tomorrow. So, so if, if you want to come hang out, out, see what musical process, can talk to some other cool people. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Glass Beach Band will be the place for and that. And I am also, I, I search for that uh, cool, um, the, the to be, not to be uh, thing that people are talking about. And I just want to, uh, oh, I was hoping I'd have this faster. Um, someone else can go. I'm just going to drop an image in the chat. Uh, at a, uh, uh, you're going to drop an image. Point of just me searching for that game. If anything funny happened. That's me. Yeah, uh, you can okay. find me at Tanimato on YouTube and Twitter. Peace. And then Franny. Yeah. So I'm Franny. You can find me on social media platforms at J U S T underscore F R A N N I E K. Uh, great. And then you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at K William White. I am in that band with Jonas called Glass Beach. Uh, we are. We have an album coming out tomorrow. Uh, it's, a, it's a remix album. It's a, <laughs> oh, oh my god! That is. That is oh, oh, oh. Franny, you're it's walking a, away. It's a remix cover album uh, where we had 18 uh, other artists cover or or remix our the entirety of our first album, the the first Glass Beach album. It's really Mm. Mm. Something might happen. Take, no, no, oh! <laughs> no, no. What happened? What happened? <laughs> okay. Cameo by Tig. I was, I was, well, I was looking oh, at the stream. And I missed um, it. So I was hearing it, but you can just see Tig's ears <laughs> pop up for a second. <laughs> that could have been bad. Very bad. Oh, that would have been a great okay. end to the stream, though. Just... Uh, yeah, so we have we have a remix cover album that's coming out tomorrow. It uh, actually it's probably gonna drop. Uh, I think usually this stuff drops Eastern time, so it's gonna drop midnight mm -hmm. Eastern time, which is nine p.m. Which here. is in one hour. Yeah. So it might drop in an hour. Uh, yeah. That would be cool. If it doesn't, it'll drop yes. in midnight. I'm pretty sure. But yeah. don't buy it until midnight Pacific time because I I think mm -hmm. our music is getting dropped Eastern time. But Bandcamp Friday is doesn't start it's till local, Pacific right? time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, don't don't purchase it until like tomorrow or until midnight. Just wait till you wake up. But you can probably listen to it on Spotify tonight before you go to bed if you're Pacific. You can time. probably even listen to it on Bandcamp. I'm not. Not sure, but yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Spotify. I like those. Uh, I like those numbers. I look at them more. Yes, yeah, I do. I do too. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, if you pre-ordered it, I don't think that's a problem. I don't think that's no. a problem because thank you for pre-ordering. I mean, it. technically, yeah, you can pre-order it. That's. I don't think that's an issue because it does. It comes out on Friday, so all of that stuff is getting processed. Yeah, hopefully. Then. I don't. Yeah. Think, I don't think that's. There's no. No silliness. I think you did a good thing no matter what, and thank you for your support. Yeah, thank cool. you. For all your right, support. that's all I'm gonna say. Um, everything's gonna be cool.
if we get things figured out fast enough, then we will we will be back next week. I mean, we should. I confirmed it with we Laura. Should be. So if I so if I don't, so if we aren't back next week, I just <laughs> we'll be doing a William Shakespeare has a gun one shot published March fifth, twenty twenty one. It's an all nighter. Do you want a well designed game? Gun. I'm sure you do. Are you getting one? Probably not. <laughs> uh, yeah. we'll be, we'll be uh, story with laura uh as our guest and then as a full cast again for the first time back I, it's not i mean kind of nice that sam wasn't here sorry but because uh, because then <laughs> oh. we'll be a full cast for the first time when we all play together oh that's uh, true that's that's a good point yeah uh so cool all right i'm gonna i'm gonna get us out of here so that we can all ski daddle eat and do whatever we want to do have a good time uh uh, thanks everybody for sticking with us through this conversation and and through the switch and system. I know I know we sort of are pretty fluid with the way we do things around here anyway, but I I appreciate it and hopefully moving forward, yeah, we won't have to do something like this again. <laughs> but you know what? Right? If uh, we yeah. do, we do. If we do, we'll do it. Okay, uh, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks everybody. Watch the other Q time shows and have a good rest of your week. Bye. Bye.